The Jehovah's Witnesses organization is facing scrutiny in Pennsylvania following allegations of widespread child sex abuse by its members. Earlier this year, we broke the story about a state grand jury's upcoming report on that topic. And now Fox 43's Harry Lee uncovers how the organization is responding to those allegations and the whistleblowers who helped bring the concerns to light. This is a serious issue for whistleblowers like Martin Hawk, who I met in May. He was so devoted to Jehovah's Witnesses that even after he walked in on another member sexually molesting his four-year-old daughter, he didn't go to police for another 11 years. Now that he's gone public with his story, Jehovah's Witnesses have labeled him an apostate and warned other members not to engage with him. <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses are holding 6,000 conventions around the world this year with the theme Exercise Patience. Ahead of a three-week convention that began July 14th in Redding, Berks County, members providing security received an email with pictures of Martin and Jennifer Hawk. I learned that I was on a list, a watch list, by all the attendants or the security uh, br brothers who handled security at that convention not to be allowed into any building. The couple had spoken to Fox 43 earlier this year about their frustrations trying to get justice within Jehovah's Witnesses for their daughter's molestation in 2005. They eventually left and were disfellowshipped or shunned. The email warned that the Hawks, quote, are not one of us. This is really something that is not shocking to me because I've watched the organization for decades and dealt with them in court. According to Jehovah's Witnesses expert Rick Allen Ross, the email shows that the organization is responding defensively to whistleblowers and critical media coverage on their handling of child sex abuse. They basically go after these whistleblowers and can disfellowship them, shun them, and punish them for speaking out. Jehovah's Witnesses should be listening to them and, and in an effort to try and correct what's wrong and to deal with the situation of child sexual abuse within the organization. The email also claims the Hawks have tried to get into past conventions by, quote, mingling with the crowd upon entry, dressing and acting as if one of us. Martin Hawk says he did attend one protest outside the 2018 Reading Convention, but has never tried to enter under false pretenses. We got permission before we even went. Um, we, the police knew we were coming. The city of Reading knew we were coming. We were respectful. We didn't engage with any Jehovah's Witnesses. We didn't try to enter the building. He says the email shows who Jehovah's Witnesses are choosing to target. It really hurt me, you know, because again, it's it's their convention. They can determine who can come and who cannot. But on the other hand, when I was an elder, I was not allowed to inform the members of the congregation that there was a known child abuser in the congregation. Jehovah's Witnesses responded to our questions about the email with this statement. Our congregants expect and value a peaceful learning environment at our conventions. To ensure the well-being of all who attend, we may at times revoke a person's privilege to attend our Bible education programs when we believe their goal is to disrupt our peaceful gatherings. The grand jury investigation is moving forward. This week, one of the 14 Jehovah's Witnesses that the Pennsylvania Attorney General charged for child sex abuse became the first to plead guilty. We, of course, will continue following this story and bring you updates on air and on fox43.com. Harry Lee, Fox 43 News. Good morning, everyone. Beautiful Saturday morning. Um, I've got quite a few things here to cover some updates on some court cases and stuff like that. Um, as you've seen from the opening clip, I'm going to put the link down below to these articles and videos and stuff, but um, <laughs> it just amazes me. Watchtower goes out of their way to shut down whistleblowers. They don't want the truth about their organization to get out and I mean, they won't tell the members, warn them about a pervo in their congregation, but they will go out of their way to make sure that these whistleblowers or what they call apostates don't go into their regional convention. And like this couple mentions, they've never been inside to protest, they've never bothered the Jehovah's Witnesses, they've never disrupted a convention, but you can see how fearful Watchtower is of these whistleblowers. I'm sure our pictures were sent to ones here in New Mexico. Just unbelievable. 
Okay, oh my goodness, what to cover first? Um, I went and checked on a case. I had mentioned this case in Fresno, um, California. Oh, it's been a while now. And I go back and check these cases every once in a while. And I want to mention that these are public records. I'm going to put the link down below to the court. And the case number is 23CECG00025. Perez versus Watchtower Bible Tract Society and his parents. Now, I happen to know that it appears in their documents that they didn't like me getting the records and they're trying to shut me up. And it's like, nobody gave me these records. I went to this website and got them myself. I hear about these cases. I see it on social media. Many search all over the world for court cases. So I went to this website. I go to the court websites myself. So, you know, the defendants are lying. They're lying. All right. Um, now, this um, is pertaining to abuse as a kid. And, um, like I said, I'm going to put the um, link below because it looks like some recent documents have been filed. A demure. Of course, Washtar is trying to get the case shut down, saying, oh, well, the Christian Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses mentioned in this. They weren't even an organization back when this alleged abuse happened. They will try everything to get out of this. We're not responsible. Um, there's no evidence of this. Now, this one document, um, it is the Superior Court of California, County of Fresno, unlimited jurisdiction. And uh, this is in the documents dated uh, 421 2023 here on page two the introduction they're kind of given a summary of what this case is about and I want to read this because those of us that have suffered some form of abuse as kids we know you know myself victim of physical abuse we try to get help we tell people, we tell adults, and they don't do anything. And this is really sad because this little boy, he was trying to get help for him and his siblings. And, I mean, they wouldn't do anything. And now they're trying to say, oh, well, you know, he could have gone and gotten help. No. So I'm just going to read this. This lawsuit purportedly arises out of the alleged physical and sexual abuse of plaintiff and his siblings by their parents, defendants, um, sometime in the 1980s and 1990s. Plaintiff claims that he and his siblings sent a letter to the Watchtower defendants in 1987 when plaintiff was eight to ask for help with the abuse by parents but allegedly received a letter in response telling them to respect your parents and remain in submission and I have heard this over and over again my friend I grew up with horribly abused by her JW husband I mean horribly I mean it's just it, everything you can think of that she still suffers from even today, 40 years later. Um, and she was told by the elders. She went to the elders repeatedly. And they kept telling her, go home, pray, and be more submissive to your husband. This is all horrific. And this type of... Um, indoctrination has got to stop 
going on. Plaintiff further claims that two elders who were sent in response to the letter to plaintiff's house, but no substantive, substantive action was taken to prevent further abuse. It is alleged that in 2009, when plaintiff was 30, he told an elder about his parents' abuse, but that the elder purported responded that the congregation plaintiff's family attended was not that elder's jurisdiction. The elder could do, could not do anything about it, and because plaintiff and his siblings had not spoken up at the time of the abuse, they were not spoken to about the abuse. Plaintiff purportedly gave a letter detailing his parents' abuse to an elder in the congregation plaintiff's family attended, but that elder allegedly responded that the events happened too long ago and there is nothing that we can do. Well, yeah, there is something you can do. Jehovah's Witnesses, you need to understand what all is happening here. You've got to report, even if it's just a rumor, an alleged um, abuse, You've got to contact the authorities. Let them handle it. They are qualified to handle this, not elders. And I keep fighting. I would love to see all of these elders who do this kind of crap. They need to be charged criminally. And... Um, I hope all of those in Pennsylvania in this grand jury investigation, I hope they charge the elders. Just like they did in Illinois. You know, found guilty and convicted. Splain. And you know what I think about your little spiel about the courts, how the juries have no legal training and they're not giving full evidence in these cases. Well, you know why? Because Watchtower fights to get a lot of this evidence shut down. Look how many times in these court cases, they, when it's all settled, they slap gag orders on it. It's happened here in New Mexico. The Bruner case. As soon as it was settled, slap confidentiality gag order on it. Uh, like I said, I will put the link down below to this. Um, with the case number in the description so that you can go do a search and look it up. Now I want to thank Melissa very much for sending me a picture. This is from the Roanoke, Roanoke, <laughs> can't talk this morning, Virginia Regional Assembly. Um, when I attended conventions at this Coliseum there would be over 9,000 JWs. This year there were just over 3,000. So glad to see the decrease. So I want to thank everybody for sending me links to this information um, about the convention and this uh, about in Pennsylvania about the emails. And there's an article to go along with that clip and how they're trying to shut down whistleblowers and we know they've been trying to do that to all of us for years but you know what watchtower you better watch out because the church of latter-day saints the mormons are having a problem guess what church of jesus christ of latter-day saints sues insurance providers over CSS, csa settlements guess what their insurance companies aren't wanting to pay out on all of these abuse cases. So watch how you better watch out. Because what if your insurance company refuses to pay on these settlements? You're going to have to start cashing in some of your hedge funds, aren't you? Have to quit buying expensive houses for your high ups like Anthony Morris and all other governing body in the hierarchy in this. So anyway, I'll put the link down to this also. Um, it, it is just so asinine of these religious organizations. The Church of 
Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has filed a lawsuit against two insurance companies claiming it's those businesses' responsibility to pay for the settlement of CSA lawsuits. How arrogant. Why doesn't the Mormon Church fork over some of their billions of dollars? That's what happened to the Catholic Church, too. A lot of the diocese here in New Mexico has had to file bankruptcy. And I know it's not just here in New Mexico. I know of some in California and all over the place. These Catholic dioceses have had to file bankruptcy because their insurance companies won't pay these lawsuits. And they had to start paying for these out of their pocket. So it's like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And um, I also want to thank this couple that uh, runs the website thejw.org. Um, Watchtower went after them and their website, and they have won. They beat Watchtower, and so wanted to show this also. A bit of background information. We are both born and bred in the organization and are in our 50s. Upon waking up at the end of 2019, we were both regular pioneers with myself a couple of months before attending pioneer school. We had for many years been fighting within the congregation to get justice done for ourselves and other brothers and sisters. It got to the point where the unjust treatment and cover-up of CSA became too much. We couldn't leave fast enough. Totally understand. In comes our website. We set it up as a parody style, but based on true events, except, what, except expecting Watchtower to come after us. At first, they just tried to come after our logo. We made slight changes, which kept them off our back. Interestingly, interestingly they didn't try to come after the contents, as they knew this was factual. The website sat there for a while until, as the Newspaper article says, when May of this year, we got an email from the three lawyers Watchtower were using to say we were in breach of copyright for using the letters JW in our name. Uh, see the link to the WIPO case, and I have the link for that. Um, my husband decided to give them a reply, so one afternoon put together a reply. He has had no legal training. He just used common sense and logic for his reply and knew if something is true, it will win out eventually. Yep. A British journalist from the Telegraph newspaper who deals with these things contacted us. He couldn't believe we had beaten Watchtower, especially as he had no legal counsel and was self-represented. He said that it's unheard of for Watchtower to lose these cases as they were very litigious and fight everything. Yeah. We feel that, as our website says, while they are chasing us, they are not harming someone else. We hope this information helps and our website can be useful in helping others to wake up too. Please feel free to use this information in our website address, address to your subscribers if you think it will benefit them. Thank you very much and like I said I will put the links down below to the court documents and as you've seen the article it was in the newspaper and a link to their website. So thank you very much appreciate it. So I want to thank all of you for watching and all of the likes and sharings we appreciate it and your comments appreciate it very much um, I just want to mention real quick that several have asked for us to send abuse victims their way so they can help them and I, I'm kind of hesitant to do that because I want to get them professional help, um, therapists who have professional training. And I have seen this happen over and over again in this community. You send someone to someone who claims they want to help abuse victims and you know give them love and support, get them over to their Facebook page, and just to be abused again. So, you know, this is my feelings on it, that if you 
are abusing someone publicly on social media or under YouTube, their YouTube videos or something like that, because you were triggered by something they said or did, well then, how can I possibly send another, you know, person over? Because what if they say something that triggers you? and you abuse them and we know so many are so fragile in this community and there's so much mental health issues and I, I just couldn't do that I would feel so bad because I've seen where some have even committed suicide and um, I, I just I just can't allow that I just can't allow that to happen so I hope everybody understands and we all suffer religious trauma one way or another. So anyway, thank you for watching and you all have a wonderful weekend. Bye.